Anybody know God is a promise keeper? Old folks said if he said it, you can put your foot on it. Because if he said it, I believe it. I'm talking to some folks that done been through some things and they know from personal experience he's a promise keeper. Some of these folks in here done made some promises to you that they didn't keep, but we serve a God who's a promise keeper. He said he'd never leave us, nor would he forsake us. He's a promise keeper. He said, lo, I be with you always. He's a promise keeper. He said, when you're sick, I be a doctor. He's a promise keeper. He said, when you get in trouble, I be your lawyer. He's a promise keeper. He said, when your marriage is acting up, I bring you and make you one. He's a promise keeper. If he said it, I believe it. He's a promise keeper. Do I have any folk that's just been kept today? He done kept his promise to you. When you should have been counted out, he kept his promise. You should have had your house foreclosed on, but he kept his promise. You should be hungry right now, but he kept his promise. You ought not have no clothes on your back, but he kept his promise. You ought to be out in this world living homeless on the streets, but my God kept his promise. Do you know he's a promise keeper? I'm not no touch a neighbor preacher, but touch a neighbor and say promise keeper, promise keeper, promise keeper, promise keeper, promise keeper, promise keeper. When I couldn't keep promises to myself, maybe I'm not talking to y'all. When I couldn't keep promises to myself, he kept his word to me. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, he draw all men unto him. He kept his promise. He kept his promise. When he died on Calvary's cross for your sin and mine, had no sin in him, but had all sin on him, he kept his promise that we would be free and free indeed. Touch your neighbor, say promise keeper. I'm glad I serve a God who's a promise keeper. And y'all deal with the same missionary Baptist folk I deal with. I done had so many preachers tell me, I'm gonna have you come preach to me. They made a promise. And I ain't got no invitation yet, but I serve a God who will keep his promise. I done watched some sports teams that done made some promises. Said they gonna win the championship and let me down, but I serve a God who will keep his promise that he'd never leave us nor would he forsake us. You ought to give God praise for being a promise keeper. <laughs> Giving honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus who is the Christ, to our pastor. Can we bless God for Pastor Ray this morning? We thank God for a leadership that invests in their sons. And speaking of sons, if you were at 7 o'clock, Reverend Sanders, I thought he was my brother, but I see he is my enemy. He preached to us this morning how to behave in the cave. And I think we're just going to stick on that how-to theme this morning. May we turn our books to the 23rd Psalm. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, I thank you so much. For life, health, and strength, God, I thank you for another opportunity where I can stand behind your sacred desk. God, the task before me is greater than I am. And God, I'm not even worthy to call your name, but you called me to preach. And God, your people need a word this morning. So make me sit down and you stand up. Show yourself to your people. Make your word believable and receivable. Lord, convince, convict, and convert. And we'll be careful to praise your name forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The 23rd Psalm, and we're just going to linger around verse 4. Most of y'all, because you go to Pastor Ray's church, don't even need your Bible for this one. And it reads as is. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Dr. Sanders preached on how to behave in a cave. And on that how-to theme, I want to talk from the subject, how to make it through the valley. How to make it through the valley. 
ushers, you may rest. How to make it through the valley. John a P. Key is one of the most influential gospel artists of our time. He has transcended decades by singing and releasing gospel music. He tagged a song with the VIP mass choir that all of you got to know if you are a born again blood washed believer that is entitled, There's a Lily in the Valley. Everybody loves this song. They love the harmonies on this song. They love the instruments on this song. They love the melodies and the lyrics to this song. But my favorite part of the song is at the beginning before they start to sing. They get on there and give the monologue. And in the monologue, John P. Key says, everybody shall have a valley experience. And I don't know how y'all feel about it today, but that statement is so true and applicable because the valley represents hardship and trouble. And it is appointed unto us that all of us gonna have to deal with the valley. How do you know that, Alex? Job 14 and one says, a man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Y'all act like y'all read y'all's Bible. We got to go through the valley. See, this valley thing, it does not discriminate. You can be rich, you can be poor. You can be high, you can be low. You can be white, you can be black. You can be saved, you can be unsaved. You can be a Christian or you can be an atheist. You can be a Baptist, you can be a Pentecostal. You can come from a household with two parents who had a happy marriage. Or you can come from one household with one father or one mother. You can be prepared or unprepared. You can be saved or unsaved, rich or poor, white, black, Jew or Gentile. Everybody got to go through the valley. That boy preaching better than y'all shouting. We got to go through the valley. So the question is, is not, is the valley coming? The question is, can I make it? So here we are now. We're looking at this valley experience, and this text is written to us by the man by the name of David. It was David who was the youngest boy in his family. It was David who was also of the Jewish culture, and it was a custom for the youngest boy in the Jewish family to tend to the sheep. So David had a personal understanding of what it meant to be a shepherd and a sheep. He understood, as a shepherd, it's your job to find green pastures. As a shepherd, it's your job to find still waters. As a shepherd, it's your job that if the 99 are there but one goes missing, you miss and you leave the 99 to find that one. He understood the importance of leadership. Now I gotta stop right here. I don't even really need to deal with this, but let me stop by. It's bad when we put the wrong folks in positions of leadership. I got a problem with folks who care more about name on auxiliary roles than they do about bringing souls to the name of Christ because we care more about position than we do about power. And we get in trouble where we put unspiritual folk in positions of leadership and have them dealing with spiritual business. Because now you got folks who are dealing with spiritual business and they don't come to Bible study. They don't come to church on Sunday morning. They don't read their Bible. They can't tell you what the Bible says. They can probably tell you, but they sure ain't practicing it. We got to watch who we put in positions of leadership. So David understood what it meant to be a shepherd, but he also understood what it meant to be a sheep. See, sheep, sheep are dumb. They can't rely on themselves. Sheep will be in green pastures and die of starvation if the shepherd's not there. The sheep will be by still waters and not drink if the water is running. They'll die of deprivation of thirst. The sheep will stay up all night long if the shepherd has not told them that the safe sheep are dumb. And sheep represent man. We are sheep ourselves. How do you know that? Alex Psalm 100 verse 3 says, For we are his people and the sheep of his pastor, which means if sheep are dumb, then we are dumb. 
make it plain. Alex, when you go in the house because you forgot something and you get in the house and forget what you was looking for, we're dumb. You flip your house upside down looking for your glasses, walk in front of a mirror to find out you got your glasses on. We're dumb. These kids that we raise, we put food on their table, clothes on their back, shoes on their feet, a roof over their head will get up, get grown, turn around and murder the same parents that provided for them because we're dumb. And so David understood what it meant to be a shepherd and a sheep. And he sits down now in his old age. He sits under a tree and begins to pen this testimony. See, I got to give David credit right here because he wasn't ashamed to share his testimony. And we get so sedated, big time bougie, born again and blood washed, where we don't want to come in here and share our testimony. Now, y'all might not have went to real church when you was a kid, but when grandma was in church, we didn't have none of this carpet on the floor. It was just hardwood. And they would have what you call testimony service. And they didn't need to have their name on the program, but they could just have a sliver in service. And grandma, we would tell her, grandma, please don't go in here and embarrass us and have a shame. Just sit down, shut up, and enjoy the service. But she, if she had a sliver in the service, would say, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody. But I couldn't keep it to myself. We got to stop being ashamed of sharing our testimony. God then brought you through some stuff, not to bless you, but to bless somebody else. And you are hindering somebody else's breakthrough because you don't want to share your testimony. I guess I preach all by myself this morning. I guess y'all ain't really been through nothing. You ain't never had to face no obstacles that you didn't know how you was going to make it over. You didn't ever have no mountains you didn't know how you was going to climb it. No valleys you had to try. No sickness that you didn't have to cure to. But you ought to be able to share your testimony. Got to give David credit because he shared his testimony. And when he writes this 23rd Psalm, he starts it off by saying, the Lord. David, I love you so much. That's a good place to start. He said, the Lord. And a lot of us could get out of a whole lot of our mess if we would just start with the Lord. We're going to try all of these counselors and psychiatrists and all of this medicine, liquor and drugs. But if you wanted to be real about it, if you could just take it to the master, we would have done got ourselves out of a whole lot of mess. Your marriage would be fixed if you put God first. You'd have more money in your pocket if you would put God first. You would have more peace in your life if you would put God first. You'd have more joy in your life if you would just put God first. So he starts it off by saying, the Lord. Y'all know who the Lord is, don't you? Stood up on the platform of nothing, reached behind the curtain of nowhere, grabbed a hold of something, brought something from nowhere onto nothing and said, let there be the Lord who can take you in your sin, send his son with no sin in him, but to die with all sin on him, the Lord, who painted the sky blue and the clouds white without a brush or a step ladder, the Lord, who can hang the sun in the sky. If we were one inch closer, we'd burn up. If we were one inch farther away, we'd freeze to death, the Lord, who brought this little light-skinned man from Charlotte, North Carolina, had no friends, no family, and let him preach at one of the greatest churches in the world, the Lord, who can take a man with a speech impediment and have him get up to preach, and when he preach, he don't stumble over his words, he don't fumble over his words, the Lord, who took old nasty you, old low-down you, old dirty you, old disgusting you, old backbiting you, old backstabbing you, old no good, don't give God no praise you, and still allowed you to be here this morning. Morning. I'm talking about the Lord. I ain't no touch your neighbor preacher. Touch your neighbor and say, do you know the man? Before I tarry too long, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I wish I had more time, but let me just get to my verse. He starts verse four and says, yay. See, before I get into this, I might not make it through this because I'm already happy. So let me run it out and then we'll walk it back. He said, yay, that's positivity. Though I, that's personal. Walk, that's pace. Through, that's the pathway. The valley, that's the pit. Of the shadow of death, 
that's the predicament. I will fear no evil, that's the proclamation. For thou, that's his presence, art with me, that's his position. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's his provision and his protection. And in another day, in another time, if I got to verse 5, it says, Thou preparest a table before me, that's preparation. Now that we ran it out, let's walk it back. He starts it off and says, yay. That's positivity in the valley. See, David was not ashamed to acknowledge his circumstances. He was not in denial of the valley. He said, yes, I'm in the valley. And it's bad when everybody else can see that you're in the valley, but you don't see it. You struggling to make ends meet. Everybody see that you struggling to make ends meet, but you don't see it. Everybody see that you having problems in your marriage, but you don't see it. Everybody see that your kids is bad and you don't know how to raise your kids, but you don't see it. It's bad when everybody else can see your valley, but you don't see it. You got to be able to acknowledge your own mess. See, in order for you to be better, you got to acknowledge I can do better. Before you can ever get what can be, you got to first acknowledge what is. Before an alcoholic can receive the help they need, they must first acknowledge for themselves I got to put the bottle down. Before a drug addict can receive the help they need, you can put them in rehab all you want. But until they want it for themselves, they're not going to see no change. Your marriage going to keep being broken until you can just come forward and say, baby, I'm the cause. You got to see your mess for yourself. I done told you this before, but my grandma, she country, she barely got a middle school education, but she had a way of making us understand things. And to make this plain for you, grandma would say, if you musty, you ought to smell yourself before somebody else do. That boy preaching. And it's bad when you musty and you don't know your own stench. Somebody else got to tell you about yourself. You ought to be able to smell yourself. And so once you acknowledge your mess, you got to deal with your mess. My daddy, the most humiliated he ever made me was, I was young, you know as young kids, you don't like to bathe, so I didn't take no bath, but I put some cologne on. And he said, you got to deal with the mess. Cologne ain't gonna cover that up. Perfume ain't gonna cover that up. i never forget it. Daddy said, you smell like a dressed up garbage can. <laughs> Trying to cover up your mess. You can't cover it up. Proverbs 28 and 13 says, he that covereth sin shall not prosper, but he that can confess and forsake sin shall have mercy. That means you got to deal with it. You got to have first positivity in the valley. He said, yay. Then he goes to though I. That's the personal of the valley. This thing is personal. The valley is different when it's you that's in the valley. I don't mind a man that run around with a whole bunch of women. But if he mess with my woman, it become personal. Ray Charles said, you better leave my woman alone. Jasmine Sullivan said she would bust the windows out your car. Don't mind a man messing with a whole bunch of women, but if he mess with my woman, it's personal. See, it's one thing when somebody's house burned down, you might come outside and record it, but when it's your house, it's personal. It's one thing when somebody else's marriage is messed up, you might gossip and talk about it, but when it's your marriage, it's personal. It's one thing when somebody got to bury their loved one, you might even show up to the funeral, but when you have to bury your loved one, you want the world to stop turning because it's personal. This thing was personal. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. 
He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He said, yea, though I, this thing was personal. And when you're going through hardship, we are supposed to be the most caring and sharing people as Christians. But when you're going through hardship, it'll make you pray a selfish prayer. When you need the Lord for yourself. David had to pray a selfish prayer. This thing was personal. So he said, yea, though I walk, that's the pace in the valley. See, walking represents David's activity in the valley. When he was down there, he didn't sit down. He didn't throw no pity party. He didn't pout. He didn't ask God, why me, why me? What did I do to deserve this? But he walked. When you get in your valley, you ought to be active in your valley. You got to do some work. Grandma said it this way. She said, you're never going to get no fruit without planting no roots. You got to do some work. And the bad thing about our church is today, used to be back in the day, you didn't have to pay nobody to do no work. You had volunteers lining up at the door because they wanted to be involved in the ministry. But now, don't nobody want to do no work. I'm talking to my young folk now. Stop seeking the platform and get to work. You trying to figure out why you don't get no playing time on your sports team. It ain't always politics. It ain't always that people don't like you. Somebody just worked harder than you did. You wonder why you didn't get that job. It's not because you wasn't qualified. You just didn't work hard enough. You got to do some work. So David, when he got in his valley, he walked in the valley. You can't sit down because the valley don't move. It's the person in the valley that's got to move. So when you sit down and pout and start soaking in your mess, you make your valley longer than what it's supposed to be. Not only can you sit down, but you can't run. Because when you run, you in a rush, you might miss something. Not only is the valley hardship, but it's a learning experience. You got to walk. So he said, yea, though I walk through. That's the pathway in the valley. Now, I got to get on David's case really quick because if you look at the text, verses 1 through 3, David was doing okay as long as God was first. He got himself in trouble when he put himself before the Lord. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He was first. He maketh me lie down in green pastures, he was first. He leadeth me beside still waters, he was first. He restoreth my soul, he was first. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake, he was first. But then he got to this fourth verse and said, yea, though I. See, we put ourselves in the valley when we put ourselves before the Lord. Some valleys are sent by God. But other valleys are ordered by us. Sometimes you can order a valley via DoorDash by the actions you have in your life. Make it plain, Alex. If you married and you messing with somebody else's wife, you ordering that valley. If you working in the church and you taking church's money to use it for your own use, you ordering that valley. If you are a parent and you mistreating your kids, abusing them and treating them all different kinds of ways, you're ordering that valley. If you go to your job and you clocking in when you're not there, you are ordering that valley. If you can go to the grocery store, I ain't gonna get no amens on this one, and take your cart full of groceries and push it all the way to your car and not put the cart back where it belongs, you are ordering that valley. Some valleys are sent by God, but other valleys are ordered by us. This is the pathway in the valley. And if I had to be honest about it, I'd do it by myself. Most of the things I got myself into, it was the pathway that I took. Didn't nobody put a gun to my head. Didn't nobody make me do it, but it was the pathway that I took. When I got burnt by touching the stove, it wasn't because grandma made me touch it. I was just curious by myself. First time I went to a party, ain't nobody forced me to get in the car. I heard the music playing. I just couldn't help myself. I did it to myself. 
But I got to give David credit because he said, yea, though I walk through. He didn't say, yea, though I walk in the valley. He said, yea, though I walk through. See, a valley is just a low point between two mountains. And so in order for you to appreciate the mountaintop, God got to take you through the valley. In order for God to show you that he can give you money in your pocket, he got to let you get broke. In order for God to show you that he's a healer, he got to let you get sick. Before God can show you he's a provider, he got to let you get in need. You got to go through the valley. But where we mess up is we take our valleys with permanent residence. We'll pack our suitcase. We'll move our house, move our family, and sit down in the valley. The gospel according to Drake, Drake said, I've been down so long, it looked like up to me. He'd been in the valley so long, it became his norm. We got to stop establishing uh, a foundation in the valley. David said, I ain't packing no bag. I'm not bringing my family. I'm not moving my house. He said, I'm going through. In other words, David had intentions of seeing the other side. No matter what it looked like right now, how you can't make ends meet, how your child won't obey you, how your house is supposed to be a home, but it's just a house. That way your child won't come back home, you're just going through. Trouble don't last always. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm just going through. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley. That's the pit itself, the valley. See, the valley, it's a low place. It's a lifeless place. It's a lethargic place. It's a lazy place. And we fall into the trap of becoming a product of our environment. See, if you stay too long, you'll find yourself being down. You look down, you talk down, you act down, you feel down, your money is down, finances down, attitude down, friendships down, marriage down, a whole lot of you no good and low down because you've been in the valley for too long. So he said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I got to hurry up and get out of here. I've been too long. The shadow of death, that's the predicament in the valley. Your valley may not be my valley, and my valley may not be your valley, but we all got a valley with our name on it. You can look to your left and look to your right. Everybody is fighting a valley right now you know nothing about. See, when you're a person, you're in three positions in relation in your valley. Either you just got in your valley, you just got out of your valley, or you on your way to a valley. Old folks said, if you ain't faced no hardship, keep on living, because life is full of trouble. But he said, the valley of the shadow of death. And no matter what your valley is, we all got to deal with our predicament. This valley, the good shouting point right here, is it says the valley of the shadow of death. A shadow don't have no substance. And the only way that you can even indicate that a shadow is present is there's got to be some light somewhere. <laughs> David didn't say this is the substance of death. He didn't say this is the sting of death. He said this is the shadow of death. And I don't know if you know this or not, every day that you wake up, you're in death shadows. When you're on your job and you think that that security gonna do you okay, you in death shadows. When you're in your house locked up with your door and your CPI security system, you're in death shadows. On your wellest day, you sick enough to die because you're in death shadows. He said, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's the proclamation in the valley. How are you going to respond when times get hard? How are you going to deal with your adversity? He said, I will fear no evil. God did not give us the spirit of fear, but he told us that we ought to be a mind of peace and of a sound mind. We are not made to be fearful. So you got to respond in the valley. You can't just get down there and do nothing. You got to respond. And the reason 
I cannot be afraid in the valley is because whatever my predicament is, God is big enough to conquer my predicament. Old folks sang a song, they said, all in his hands. It ain't closing time, but I put it all in his hand. No matter the problem, I know my God, or he can solve them. Uh, I put it all in his hand. God Almighty, the reason I don't have to be afraid while I'm in my valley is because the next part says, for thou art with me. That's his presence while you're down in your valley. And I thank God for his presence while I'm down in my valley. Because when you got the Lord, you got everything that you need. God Almighty, he's all in all. He's able. He's Abraham's sacrifice. He's a baby born in Bethlehem. He's a bridge over troubled water. He is bred in a starving land. He's a baby born in Bethlehem. He is Christ crucified on Calvary. He called me and I will answer. He's Daniel's lion in the lion den. Uh, uh, he deteriorates uh, uh, my wrongdoing. Uh, uh, he's my everything. Uh, uh, he's everlasting uh, to everlasting. Uh, uh, he's Ezekiel's wheel uh, in the middle of a wheel. Uh, uh, he's my father. Uh, he's the father of my faith. Uh, uh, he's the founder uh, of my faith. Uh, uh, he is God uh, who gets all the glory. Uh, uh, he's Gideon's army. Uh, uh, he's high and lifted up. Uh, uh, He's a high priest, uh, uh, he's it. Uh, whatever I need, uh, uh, he's it for me. Uh, uh, he's just Jesus, uh, uh, he's Jehovah, uh, he's Jeremiah's uh, fire shut up in his bones. Uh, uh, he's King of Kings. And he's Lord of Lords. Uh, uh, he's my God. Uh, uh, he's a mighty God. Uh, uh, he's a merciful God. Uh, uh, he's Mary's baby. Uh, he's Nicodemus' his night school teacher. Uh, uh, Nehemiah's wall. Uh, uh, he'll never, uh, he'll never uh, leave my side. Uh, uh, he's omniscient. Uh, uh, he's omnipotent. Uh, but then he's omnipresent. Uh, uh, he's the Prince of Peace. Uh, uh, he's the peace. That surpass all understanding. Uh, uh, he's quiet uh, uh, like a little lamb. Uh, uh, he's a resting place. Uh, uh, Jesus is real. Uh, for I can feel uh, uh, him in my soul. Uh, uh, he's Samson's power. Uh, uh, he's Solomon's wisdom. Uh, he's my savior. Uh, that saved me from my sin. Uh, uh, he's time. Uh, did y'all hear what I'm saying? Uh, uh, he's time. Uh, Cause he's waiting on you. Uh, uh, he's the same. Uh, yesterday, uh, today, uh, uh, and tomorrow. Uh, uh, he's unique. Uh, uh, he's unusual. Uh, but then he understands. Uh, uh, he understands uh, uh, my rising. Uh, uh, he understands uh, uh, my downfall. Uh, he was the victim on Friday. Uh, but he's the victor on Sunday. Uh, uh, he's a wheel. Uh, in the middle of a wheel, uh, he's away, he's away, he's away out of nowhere. He got x-ray vision, uh, why you judge me uh, on the outside, uh, uh, he's looking on uh, the inside of my heart. Uh, uh, he's Yahweh, Elohim, uh, Jehovah, and then he's El Sadiah, uh, and he's got a zeal. Uh, for all mankind. Uh, when you got the Lord with you, uh, you don't have to be afraid. Uh, if you don't remember nothing else I said, uh, when you get down in your valley, uh, keep on walking. Uh, that's the shouting point today. Uh, uh, keep on walking. Uh, uh, touch your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, uh, say neighbor, uh, say neighbor. I'm a valley walker. Uh, when I get in my valley, uh, I'm not throwing in the towel. Uh, when I get in my valley, uh, I'm not running on through. Uh, but I'm a walker. Uh, I'm going to walk. Uh, I'm going to walk uh, uh, in my valley. Uh, when my friends turn on me, uh, walk on. Uh, when I can't find my way, uh, 
walk on uh, when my family's not there uh, walk on uh, when I got trouble in my marriage uh, walk on uh, when I can't see my way walk on uh, when the kids acting up uh, walk on uh, when my wife don't understand uh, walk on uh, when my husband don't want to listen uh, walk on uh, when my change uh, is acting strange uh, walk on uh, when I'm hungry walk on Walk on in the morning, walk on in the evening, walk on in the noonday, and one of these days, it won't be long, you're going to look for me, and I'll be gone, I'm going to move, I'm going to move, I'm going to move, a little bit higher. I got a mama over there waiting on me. I'm gonna move a little bit higher. I got a grandma over there waiting on me. I'm gonna move a little bit higher. Sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm gonna move a little bit higher. And I'm going to sit down with my Jesus. I'm going to tell him how I made it over. I'm going to tell him how I made it over. Through many storms, through many dangers, toys and snares. I've already come. Y'all know what it was. Y'all Baptist folk. It was grace that brought me this far. And it's going to be grace uh, that lead me on. Uh, if you're a valley walker today, uh, let me hear you uh, say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. I got so much. I got so much. I got so much to thank my God for. And while you're walking in your valley, uh, don't rush my God, uh, uh, just wait on him. Uh, old folks said, uh, you can't uh, uh, hurry God. Uh, you just got to wait. Uh, you got to trust him uh, and give him time, uh, no matter uh, how long it takes. Uh, He's a God, uh, you can't hurry, uh, but he'll be there, uh, uh, don't you worry, uh, he may not come, I need somebody to shout right there, uh, he may not come, uh, he may, uh, he may not come when you want him to come, uh, but he's always... He's always on time. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. David wrote this 23rd Psalm as his testimony to let us know that you can make it through your valley. And if all you got to do is walk, when you get to verse 5, he said, he prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. That means all I got to do is sit down and eat. If I can make it through this valley, God got something prepared for me. And what God got prepared for you, can't nobody touch it. Can't nobody mess with it. Can't nobody take it from you. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. If you don't remember nothing else I said today, be a valley walker. When times get hard, you're going to keep walking. When people walk out on you, you keep walking. When people turn their backs on you, you keep walking. When people doubt and criticize you, you keep walking. When people minimize and scandalize your name, you keep walking. Don't take this church hurt and leave. Keep walking. Because God got something prepared for you. And we don't want other folks to hinder our blessing. Shine on. Shine on me, let, let your light from the lighthouse 
Shine on me. Shine. Shine on me. Lord, shine on me. Let, let your light from the lighthouse shine on, on me. Shine. Jesus from the lighthouse shine